I can still remember it as though it were yesterday, and it was three years ago. Three years ago when we last heard this same gospel reading proclaimed, and three years ago that I last preached on it, and I can still remember the moment after Mass like it was, well, like it was today. And the gentleman came up to me after Mass, and he had a smile on his face, and after hearing this gospel today and after hearing me preach, I have no idea what I preached on three years ago, so I didn't have to worry about that. But I can still remember him coming up to me and looking at me, and he said, Father Steve, just one more thing, just one more thing that I have to avoid. You know, like sugar and salt and carbs. Now I'm supposed to avoid worry. Is there nothing good left that I can have in my life? I don't know. Is there? Ah, yes, there is. Yes, it seems as though we're being told, and we are today, to avoid one more thing. Thou shalt not worry. We should put above all of our doors. We should, why, inscribe it on anything we can. We should post it on our computer screens and on our tablets and on our cell phones. We should certainly put it wherever we can see it every single day. The 11th commandment. Thou shalt not worry. Oh, oh, but you say, well, that's easy for Jesus to say to not to worry. After all, he's God. What has he got to worry about? Nothing. It's easy for him to be able to say to you and I, why there's nothing we should worry about. After all, Jesus doesn't have, well, he doesn't have a mortgage payment to make. And certainly, that's something we worry about. Why, Jesus doesn't have, well, he doesn't have children, so he doesn't have to deal with the reality of children being sick like I have to deal with, and so why it's easy for him to say not to worry. And then, of course, Jesus doesn't hear, doesn't have, as I heard this past week, a teenage daughter that's in 11th grade and hasn't been asked for, out for prom yet. And all the worry that that's causing me as a parent, because after all, will she be asked? I hope and pray to God she will be asked, or otherwise, well, otherwise it will be the end of the world as I know it, as a mother shared with me. And then a dad came up to me just moments later, and he was telling me about his worries. His son actually asked somebody out to prom, and to his dismay, she said yes. And I said, well, what's the worry? And he looked at me and he said, well, my son wants to use my antique car. And I don't want him behind the wheel. Yes, there's much to worry about. There's much to worry about. Even those who are asked for prom are worrying these days about what it is that they will wear, what kind of dress or what kind of tuxedo might be the apparel for the night. There's worries about our health. There's worries about family relationships. There's worry about not having enough time. There's worries about not having enough money. There's worries about getting sick. After all, the flu epidemic is running rampant. There's so much to worry about. So why give that up? It's not even Lent yet. But Jesus wants you and I to give it up recognizing that it really is humanly impossible. Actually, what Jesus wants us to do is not necessarily give it up, but to be able to change, to be able to change our consciousness. Because when we worry, we go through life with an anxiety consciousness. We're always anxious. We're always worried. We're always asking and we're always thinking there's not enough. There's not enough. There's never going to be enough. There's just not enough. Oftentimes that anxiety consciousness is what enables you and I to focus in on that which is lacking, that which is, or which is not enough. 
Not enough time, not enough money, not enough energy, not enough exercise, whatever the not enough might be. So what Jesus wants you and I to do when he tells us to seek first the kingdom of God is that he wants us to go through life recognizing that there's always going to be worries that you and I are going to carry with us. But as we carry them, he wants us to have a different kind of consciousness, and it's called a gift consciousness. A gift consciousness. It's enabling you and I to walk through life, recognizing that everything we have is a gift. This very moment, the opportunity that you and I have to be able to gather in this church, to have the freedom that is ours to be able to worship without fear or without persecution or without being killed, is indeed a gift. And so we come to this place of worship, and we come and we lift our voices in prayer and in praise, and we can do it all because of this incredible country that we live in, this freedom that is ours. So we are invited as we carry those anxieties and those worries that are part of daily life, whether it be about paying the bills or taking care of the kids or having enough of this or that. Hopefully, as we can walk through life with a gift consciousness, which is what the kingdom of God is and is about. Why, then it can help us as we carry those worries and as we carry those anxieties that are part of daily living because once we recognize life itself as a gift and the gift of today as a gift and this moment as a gift, well, then we take that anxiety and that, we wor and that worry and we connect it up with the gift and we realize that even though our choosing not to worry as much isn't going to change the reality that there are things that are going to be worrying that we're going to have to worry about. What does change is our ability to walk through them and to carry those burdens that worry and anxiety bring to our lives in such a way that we will know, as we heard in today's first reading, that our God will never forget us. Our God does not give up on us. Our God will provide for us, as the gospel reminds us tonight. So let us come to this table, here to receive yet another gift, the gift of Christ himself, who understands our burdens and our anxieties and our worries and our frets. And he invites us to take those and to place them upon his shoulders, upon the cross that he was willing to carry for us, and that he, along with us, will walk this journey of life, yes, continuing to worry, but with a new spirit, a spirit that recognizes that even the trials and the tribulations and the difficulties and the struggles of this life will provide for them and for us ample opportunities to recognize God's presence in them. And when we can see that, we discover the gift.